Happy Friday in my world. Happy whenever you'll see this in your world. Okay, bienvenidos a mi canal. Welcome back to my channel. If you know me, thank you so much for coming back to see you, girl. I appreciate you and I love you. If you do not recognize this face, however, my name is Latrice. Nice with you. And this right here is Faith by Latrice. Mm -hmm. Where faith is the muscle we exercise around here. Now let's get on into it. Y'all know dilly dallying. Mira. Yes, quickly, but I'm hyped. Uh, in my little librito, today the verse was Jesus wet. Shortest verse or scripture in the Bible, but it's impactful because it shows that Jesus was also human, not just God. He cared that he that his friend had died. Boom. In this, this is John 11. And so basically, Mary and Martha sent word to Jesus. He was in a different town. He was like two days worth of journey. That's how far he was from them. They sent word to him and was like, yo, Jesus, your friend, whom your friend who you love, he is sick. That's what they told him. So basically, that's like, Jesus, can you come heal our brother? This is your friend. We're sad. He doesn't come right away. He leaves two days later. So by that time, he had Lazarus had died. Let me read this part to you. La la la. Whew. So Jesus told his disciples. He said, finally, the Bible says, finally, in verse seven, finally, he said to his disciples, let's go back to Judea. But his disciples objected. They said, wait a minute, rabbi or teacher. Only a few days ago, the people in Judea were trying to stone you. Are you going to go? Are you going there again? You going back? They just tried to kill you. What you going back for? He then says like this metaphorical parable thing, right? It says, Jesus replied, there are 12 hours of daylight every day. During the day, people can walk safely. They can, they can, they can see because they have the light of this world. But at night, there is danger of stumbling because they have no light. Then he said, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I will go wake him up. They actually thought he meant, oh, he's sleeping. But he then had to tell them plainly, no, he dead. I'm about to go do something to prove to y'all that I'm God. Boom. What's the point? Where he gave that confusing metaphor to me that I was like, why are you talking about daylight and people can see? Rah, rah. I looked it up. Basically, the hours of daylight, because he was like, in another version, it says, aren't there 12 hours of daylight, right? People can move around and do stuff in a daytime that they can, when they can see well, right? They can move around easily when it's dark time, when the light has gone away. Um, so the hours of daylight equals, or it means the time that God allotted for Jesus's earthly ministry. Mm. It was saying that his time had not been completed yet to do what he was sent to do. And until his time is up, and after he's finished doing what he's supposed to do, until then, nobody's going to harm him and nobody can stop him from doing the thing he was called to do. My God. Because I got to thinking. They was like, the disciples was like, yo, my man, they just tried to kill you back in that city. You trying to go back? Jesus, it, the Bible really explains how he is somebody who knows, who can empathize, who knows exactly what we experience right now on earth because he experienced it. He had to fight fear of going back to that old town that tried to kill him for doing what he came to do. His disciples, his friends, the people he'd been rocking with for three years told him, yo, my man, are you really going back? He had to get the courage enough to tell them, yes, I'm going back. Why? Because he had a job to do. He had a mission. He had an assignment while he was on earth. He said, I'm not about to let nobody and no thing stop me from what I came to do. Because what I have, what I have in me, what I came to do, it means something. It's going to change things. My God. And that's not just for him. Because that's the same reason why he told Judas, whatever you getting ready to do, my God, do it quickly. Because what you're going to do to me is not going to stop what God is doing through me. That is for somebody that I'm talking to right now. Whoever's watching me right now, do not let the fear of something, mm, the ridicule from somebody, be it not just a stranger. I mean, the people closest to you. Whether it be your family, your mom, your dad, your sister, your cousin, your neighbor who's known you since you were little and you scared that if you go out and do this new thing, they're going to talk about you. It doesn't matter what anybody on this planet is saying. There's something. You have something special. Yes. Que me está mirando ahora. You have something special in you that the world needs. You can be surprised by something. God. But you do not have to have fear of anything. For the Bible says that he did not give us a spirit of fear. You don't have to accept it. He gave us the spirit of power, love, and a sound mind, a.k.a. self-discipline, a.k.a. self-control. You don't got to be scared of nothing. My God. Hmm? Okay. 
So the next time somebody gets to asking you, you going to do that? You going to go back there? You going to? Yes, because I have a job to do. And if you're not with it, get on my face. All right, that's it. Let me, <laughs> let me come back. Si nadie te ha dicho hoy, esta día que te estoy hablando a ti mismo, if nobody has told you today, yes, you watching me right now, I want to tell you that I love you. Mm. And I love me too. Because listen, life be life and out here, but get what? <laughs> We're going to prosper regardless. Catch you on the flip side. Bye.